Did I choose makeup, YouTube, for the sole purpose of not having to wear a bra while filming? We may never know. <sighs> Hi friends. Once again, thank you so much for all of the love and the amazing feedback on the latest video. If you haven't seen it yet, I will link it up here. It has been really fun and really rewarding dipping my toes back into the YouTube pool. And it's been really nice getting back in touch with everyone here. So, hi. You may have seen that poll that I floated on Instagram stories the other day about which palette I should film with next. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. It's really the only platform that I am on regularly. Besides YouTube, it's the only one that I make content for. And also occasionally I do ask for my audience's feedback on what I should do with the channel. And I was truly Natalie and Brulia on this one. I could not decide which one I wanted to dive into first. So I thought I would take the onus off of myself and ask you all what you wanted to see first. By a pretty wide margin, the majority of you chose the Melt and Bailey Sarian collab, which if you watched my last video, you would know that I had made a clown purchase of. Which by the way, when I floated that poll, I was fully intending to film the very next morning. However, <laughs> my immune system had other plans. As I was setting up for filming that morning, I actually came down with probably the second worst stomach flu I've ever had. It came on really quickly and lasted about 48 hours. It was pretty comparable to the time I got Norwalk. So if you've ever had that, you know. Luckily I'm feeling much better today. So we are finally doing what you all asked for, which is a little unboxing and first impressions of what I purchased from the Melt and Bailey Sarian collection. And honestly, is this really a surprise that this is the vibe y'all wanted to see from me? Didn't think so. So why don't we just get on into it? Let's unbox this bad boy from Melt and Bailey Sarian, slap some spooky, spooky glam on our faces and just get started. For today's video, I think I'm just gonna throw on my base off camera. I've got nothing really new to share there. And the main focus of this video is the stuff that I purchased from this collection, which does not involve any base products. So I'm just going to skip ahead and I will meet you all on the other side. Three, two, one. I don't know. When I tell you that today's filming process has already been a journey. If you wanna skip this rant I'm about to go on, just um, go to this timestamp right here. I probably spent the better part of an hour trying to figure out how to set up my phone to simultaneously capture real footage for Instagram because I know that using my DSLR footage on Instagram, something through the uploading process degrades the quality of the footage. So it ends up looking kind of poopy. So I thought, okay, let's just set up the phone. It is such a shame I was going to save the footage of me going through this base routine for my reel. You know, if I skipped it here, I could be like, hey, if you really wanted to know how I put this base together, you should go check out my reel on Instagram. Cross promotion. I don't know. It sounds like a thing content creators do. So I'm sinking the better part of an hour into fussing over this setup with my phone and the other tripod. And the framing's not right and it's not close enough. And if I just zoom in, it's going to degrade the footage even more, which kind of defeats the purpose of the whole setup. So I pull out this mini tripod that I bought like two years ago trying to set it on the desk. And that stupid little thing is actually a piece of shit and I'm going to throw it away. And after about 45 minutes, I just go, why am I wasting my time? I started this process at around noon. It is now 3 p.m. and I am just getting into the makeup now. I hate that I have this amazing piece of filming equipment in my pocket that I want to utilize better and I just can't for the life of me figure out how to do that without breaking my brain and also my spirit. Yeah, this piece of garbage, what 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 even is that? What what even what position is what trash? Do not buy one of these. What a waste of my afternoon. When some people can just like prop their phone up on a shelf and just create amazing content, I somehow as a person seem to be incapable of casually creating short form content. I was so close today. I was really, I thought I had it figured out and I just, I just whiffed it so hard. Ah, okay. Truly it is a shame that nothing is working out today because my base today looks so good. I'm sorry, but this comment combination of things just ate. Of course, all the products I used will be listed down below in the description box so you can at least piece it together for yourselves. Dear God, with that being said. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Let's fucking unbox this thing, shall we? It has been a grip since I've ordered makeup online. Just to avoid shipping fees and duties and taxes, I've been keeping most of my makeup purchases to drugstore or things that I can easily grab from Sephora. So when I tell you when I had to go pick this up from the post office, 
and pay an extra $35 on top of what I already paid for this was a bit jarring for me. If I added up every single duties and taxes transaction that I have made in my lifetime, I think it would make me quit YouTube altogether. <laughs> but a clown purchase is a clown purchase, so here we are. I really do love Melt's aesthetics as a brand. Let's have a look. So I also threw these in for good measure. These are the Liquid Set Lipstick Minis from the collaboration. I always love Bailey Sarian's lip combinations. And also I've always wanted to try the Melt Liquid Lipstick Formula. And minis just seemed like a really responsible choice. And because this bundle was still in stock on their website, I ended up just going with the If Looks Could Kill bundle. So this is what I could get my hands on from the collection, which like a few weeks out, not bad. I definitely thought that this whole collection was gonna be sold out a lot faster. I don't I don't know if that is indicative of what I am about to experience with these products, but we'll see. Sorry, misophonic people, look away. The packaging is super on brand for Melt and Bailey Sarian. Honestly, what a great partnership, so smart. The brand and the creator are just really well suited to each other. Ooh, yeah. Wait, I think there's a cute liner, hold on. This is a fun way to do a color story reveal. Okay, three, two, one. Now that I'm looking at it, these shades are kind of an amalgam of my favorite melt palettes. Huh, hold on. A few moments later. Okay, hear me out. <laughs> I will link all the appropriate videos where I've used these palettes on my channel in the corner somewhere. Granted, I think Bailey's palette is more muted and deep in tone, just generally, but are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, clock that similarity right away because these are some of my favorite tones in this palette. I gotta be careful with old Miss Gemini here because she has been through the ringer. But like, correct me if I'm wrong. Again, Bailey Sarian's palette has, I think just generally a lot more depth than these other color stories. But I do not think my suspicions were misplaced and not as much overlap with Gemini 2. I was wrong on that one. But this palette is essentially if Muerte and Gemini 1 had a baby, which if they're not in circulation anymore and you don't own them, kind of a get. Regardless, I'm really excited to dive into this because clearly this color story is full of tones that I already love and gravitate toward. These kind of shades repeatedly show up in my collection. What can I say? She is an earthy bitch. I know that I am not the biggest glitter eye gel girly. I have a handful of them in my collection, but I just don't reach for them. But guys, the sparkle and the oh my god, this is like really juicy. Okay, this is not like other glittered eye gels that I have purchased before. That went on super opaque and the formula is silky. The problem with any cosmetics formula that is gel or liquid based, if your component isn't airtight, the moisture in the formula will eventually just evaporate and you're left with a dry clump of unusable product. So you kind of have to use these up before they dry out. These pot liners also look so sumptuous. I run into the same problem with pot liners that I do with glitter gels, but when people use pot liners on camera, it just looks so satisfying. Like I want to be that girl. This is the other glitter gel in Boom Slang. Look at it, it's so bouncy. So Boom Slang doesn't have a base color like Wisteria does. It is just clear gel with glitter. Nevertheless, I am excited to use both of these today. It being an all matte palette, I figured why why not go for the glitter gels? All right, I'm coming back around on this video. Perhaps we can salvage this day after all. For a makeup enthusiast, there's nothing quite like getting really hyped to try some new products. So let's go ahead and do the dang thing. I'm gonna zoom you in a titch and we're gonna start playing with some eyeshadow. Daniel is going to come home from work tonight and he is going to find me in here still blending eyeshadow at dinner time. And he's gonna be like, what did you do all day? And I'm gonna be like, this. Uh -huh. By the way, the blush I chose for today's shoot is very on theme. This is the Melt Cream Blush Light in the shade Honey Thief. And I tried to powder around the area so that I wouldn't lose all of that dewy glow. I also layered on a bit over top of everything and it didn't disturb the base, which is always so surprising because this formula is dewy. And after enduring my rantings and ravings today, I think you all deserve a satisfying mirror peel. Oh, let's see if I can pull this off. Okay, three, two, one. Good. As far as color story for myself today, I honestly have no idea what I want to do. So Wisteria has a deep purple base with some unicorn skin glitter running through it. We could also just really go whole hog and like kind of use a bunch of stuff. Maybe I'll just go where the spirit takes me today. Let's at least throw on an eyeshadow base while I ruminate on that. 
You would never believe this, but my lights are on their warmest setting. And you would think that I am lighting this studio with fluorescence right now. I know we're definitely gonna tap into this black here cause I am just so curious. Whenever there's a matte black in an eyeshadow palette, I just need to put it to the test. Also, I'm really gravitating towards this shade here in the middle, Saren. This seems to be the grounding shade for the entire color story. Also, I'd love to pop kerosene in there somehow. All the shade names are poisons, ha ha ha. Let's just start futzing around and finding out. I think safely, we can probably just go in with arsenic and try and use that as our base today. A little bit of kick up in the pan, but not a whole lot. That is peachy neutral goodness right there. This being the lightest shade in the palette, it already has a nice amount of richness to it, which I love. I love a palette that doesn't shy away from richness and depth. This is what the girls have been screaming for. I think if you asked any makeup enthusiast out there, what do you need the most in a palette? And I think a lot of people would tell you, buildable depth. I'm loving arsenic. That was so easy to throw down. Like, what a blend. Let's pick up some thallium to add even more richness and more depth. This is a lot more punch than I realized. I thought this was gonna be more of a graduated step down, but she really is punchy. Could have already made a fatal error, but um, let's go back in with arsenic and try and mute that down a bit. I don't know why I'm surprised, but this palette don't mess around. What I should have done was go in with cyanide. I think that actually was gonna be the better move for something to contrast with sarin. What would happen if I threw in some cyanide now? Let's find out. So hopefully this isn't just like mud city. Oh yeah, I don't hate that. In case you already haven't picked up on it, we are going bold today. So strap in, folks. These shades really are not giving me a whole lot of trouble right off the bat. They're being very forgiving and very easy to blend. Oh yeah, I do love that shade on its own. Really gives you more of that yellow undertone. Let's finally dig into Saren and see what happens. I think this shade will probably dominate the look anyway. I think this palette might have the unintentional side effect of creating those really muddy, murky blends and color combinations, which aren't everyone's cup of tea, but when you're in the mood for it, it just, it hits. And this is really hitting for me today. I'm just gonna take a clean brush, really get out from under there, so we're not dragging it too far down the face. This is really pretty, actually. Like, look how easily that just blended underneath my eye. Ooh, yeah. This makes my goth little heart very, very happy. So far, I'm really enjoying working with these. Usually, I'm quite careful when it comes to really deep, bold eyeshadows because with a lot of formulas, they really can get away from you so fast. I am finding though that I don't have to be too precious with this formula, which is not surprising for Melt at all. And again, historically, I really love Melt, clearly. have been a fan for a number of years. Their recent releases though have really not been hitting for me. You know, it's giving ColourPop vibes. Not to shit on ColourPop, but like because of ColourPop's price point, you know what you're gonna get. Your expectations are set appropriately. So when something's really good from ColourPop, like exceptional, it is a nice surprise. For the price point, ColourPop is great, especially for people who are just starting their makeup journey or who just wanna play and have fun, who aren't taking it too seriously. I think that is really what ColourPop does best. But when Melt Cosmetics threw out like, what looked like to me a really lazy cash grab Nightmare Before Christmas collection, I just haven't felt compelled to purchase from them in a really long time. But this is really recapturing the magic for me. You would think that Nightmare Before Christmas and Melt would really go hand in hand. I don't know, maybe I'm just like being too hard on it, but I felt like they really phoned it in, which Melt does just every now and again. That could just be me though. Comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of Maybelline Superstay, which is my powder foundation with an eyeshadow brush and just kind of blend around the edge here. 
BRB just blended off my entire eyebrow. Really trying to embrace the mess on this one and really not get too caught up in the minutia. I think this side I over blended a little bit because it is kind of starting to look a bit confused. Not really worried, we're probably just gonna throw glitter gel all over this thing and call it a day. This is definitely one of those trust the process moments. All right, let's go for it. Let's dip into lead. That is a lovely black. I overblended a tiny bit and now the base underneath my eyes starting to go a little haywire. That is really lovely though. Being very careful with it under the eyes. Oh, but that's nice. You know, I do think I kind of want to go all the way in with the black. Is that crazy? Might be, but we're going to do it anyway. I think I have a plan to build a new inner corner with some liner anyway, so just try and convince you to come with me on this journey. This black really just put us in concentration mode. I feel like this palette just lured me into a false sense of security being like, no, we're fine. Don't be afraid. Having a clean brush on deck really um, comes in handy in situations like these, especially with blacks and you can just blend around them and it'll usually help you out there. Like this black may be potent, but it is blendable. So that's definitely a saving grace. While this may be a terrifying process, I am kind of having fun. And that's really all that matters, isn't it? Just for the hell of it, I think I want to go in with kerosene on the inner portion, just because I'm kind of curious, like if this shows up blue at all. It's still really dark. Don't hate it. These shades are generally so much deeper when you actually apply them than what they look like in the pan. Oh, there we go. We get a little bit of brightness now. Oh, I kind of really like that. Like fair warning, this palette is not for the faint of heart. Like there's your nightmare before Christmas. Now whatever this nonsense was. I kind of beefed up the purple right in here in that mid-tone just to kind of match the density of the blue. I don't know if I'm just becoming delirious, but I'm kind of living for this vibe right now. It's been a hot minute since I've put this much eyeshadow on and you may be disagreeing at this moment, but I don't think we've lost the plot yet. Here's what I want to do. What I want to do is I want to try and use these gel liners as kind of a base for the glitter, but I'm just going to swatch them with my fingers and see what the texture is. Let's just see what happens happens when I do this. Whoa! Okay, was not expecting that. Again, this formula is really silky and creamy. Wow! Okay, that went on like a liquid eyeshadow. That's crazy. And it says ultra matte gel liner, so I'm curious to see if it'll dry down. This might be exactly what I needed for today. Wow, I was not expecting that. A lot of gel liners that I've tried in the past are really quite solid. Oh, wow. That basically works like cream eyeshadow and they are drying down pretty much matte. Okay, fun fact. <laughs> These are virtually budge proof. I scrubbed with soap and hot water. There's still definitely a stain there. So these are gonna last, be warned. That was more for myself than anyone else. I'm just gonna take a sip of water before we go in and do this. Why am I actually like scared? I would like to use nightshade on the inner portion of the lid and onyx to blend out the outer edge. Say a little prayer, let's give her a whirl. I'm going with the tiniest amount. And I'm gonna try and just tap it in. Let's see. I'm just kind of tapping it until I can kind of feel the product settle. Oh my God. Who is she? I'm shooketh to my very core. I'm gonna go in with a bit of kerosene on the brush just to kind of blend it in. I'm so impressed. I'm gonna take a little bit of lead as well. That felt like alchemy. I've never before encountered a gel liner with that level of viscosity and blendability. Like, are you seeing this? Bailey Sarian, you done did it. I have no notes. Wow. I guess we'll do it on the other side. Again, just the tiniest of dabs. It just 
sets beautifully over the lid, over all this eyeshadow. Oh, here's a tidbit. Just tried to layer a bit and look, you can see a bald spot forming. But once it is set, it is set. Like this isn't going anywhere. Now that that's dried down, I'm gonna try and patch that a tiny bit. Kind of worked. Once that dries, I'm sure it'll blend in a little bit better. And to think I was almost not going to buy those. I really was kind of like, eh, take or leave them. Now they might be my favorite thing about this collection. Now I'm gonna actually line with Onyx, the black. And this time I'm gonna actually use a brush. Even that makes such a huge difference. I'm trying to blend that black into the black eyeshadow. My camera is a little confused as to where my face is right now. And you know what? It's probably because I'm blending into the background. <laughs> it's giving, um. I actually did it myself. Yeah. I really want to see what this does in the waterline. I've seen other people use gel liners in their waterlines. I don't have the most sensitive waterline, so I'm curious. It's fun because you can really kind of wiggle it right into the lashes at the same time. So far, I'm not feeling any irritation, so don't take my word for it. I'm not sure how safe this is to do, or even if you really should be putting this in your waterline. I'm certainly not afraid of it going anywhere. And here's the thing, you can definitely feel it. It is definitely there, like there's a layer of gel liner on your waterline. Oh yeah, definitely getting some floaties in there for sure. It doesn't seem like it, but I think we are kind of in the home stretch. What I would love to do is create a little inner corner flow Click using this. I'm really just trying to put this stuff to the test now, now that I've seen what it can do. Just really finishes off the look, you know? So I don't think I'm gonna futz around for too much longer, but I do think it's time to stop stalling and play with some glitter. And call me crazy, but I think these two products are gonna look pretty good together. Let's just take some Wisteria. I'm definitely tapping this out of the back of my hand first. Plop that on. <laughs> You're kidding. Okay. That just sent this look into another dimension. I am thoroughly gagged. This is the kind of stuff that like cosmetic dreams are made of. I sound like I'm exaggerating, I'm not. The combination of these things is actually mind blowing. Because that purpley blue base in that glitter, it just blends so well on top of that liner. And the chunkier pieces of glitter that kind of just pop out in the light. I almost don't want to go in with Boom Slang because I do not want to ruin the magic of this combination. I feel like we've reached the zenith of what this can become today. What I will do is take a little bit of Boom Slang. I'm just gonna try and just put a little dab of it right underneath. Yeah, that went a bit overboard. I think the too much jean finally kicked in. I think I've reached a point where there's not much more I wanna do on the lid. So I think I'm gonna go off camera, put on some lashes, maybe just like take a little breather. And when we come back, we will finish the rest of the look. I really needed that sugar because I am winded. I feel like a big, bold look really deserves a big, bold lash. So these are Chemise by Kiss. Kiss, if you wouldn't mind just going ahead and sponsoring the channel, my inbox is open. If you really want a lash that says, I don't do any hard labor, these are the ones. Let's dive into a lip. We could do a dark lip with this, but honestly, I think I want something just a bit more pale just to really let this subtle eye look speak for itself. Let's play around though. Let's see what happens. I'll throw down some liner. This is Spice from Rimmel. The Rimmel Lasting Finish Formula is also a little bit stiffer than the Maybelline one, which means it's just a little easier to, you know, like scribble on and call it a day. Now, I don't remember the marketing campaign for this collection exactly. I have a feeling though that this set was designed to not only wear on their own, but also to combine to create your own custom shades. So I might do a little chopping and screwing with these two shades here. This is Foxglove and this is Weeping Fig. Oh, that is quite dark. Oh, that is way darker than I anticipated. Oops. I think we kind of dodged a bullet there. Let's go with Foxglove and see what happens. I 
I need a darker liner. What I'm thinking though is I could probably use this as liner. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of Weeping Fig on the back of my hand, which I've already washed about 5,000 times today. Dip into that with my little brush. actually pretty quick and easy. We don't do matte very often on this channel, but when we do, no, I'm into it. I'm kind of living for it. We're so close. We are very much nearly there. I almost don't want to put on any highlighter because I feel like the cream blush is really still giving us that glow. I feel like a highlight might be just putting a hat on a hat at this point. I don't know. Like, what do we think? Like what, three hours later, this base is still kind of really doing it for me. Let's spray down while I think about this. I was this close. I was this close. Not today, Satan. Oh, now I'm seeing the fallout. I should not be looking at this face of the microscope right now because she is breaking down. If I don't check this entire bottle in like 10 minutes, I will get a dehydration headache. Stick a fork in her, folks. She is done. That, thank God, is a wrap. I was not emotionally prepared for this journey of discovery that this collection decided to take me on today because I have not seen nearly any reviews of this collection online. I've more or less been able to steer clear of other people's opinions, which has allowed me to form my own. And I don't know if I purposefully kept my expectations low so I wasn't going to be disappointed. I don't think I was truly expecting these products to perform as well as they did. And also before purchasing these products, I was pretty convinced that the palette was gonna be the only thing truly worth exploring. And actually, I think I was proven wrong. Let's just start with the palette while I have it in my hands. It's not that it didn't perform and meet and exceed my expectations. I had a lot of fun. It was grungy, swampy, murky perfection. And again, this sounds so silly saying it out loud, but really the level of depth to which these shades go when they're applied on the lid did catch me off guard. In the pan, it looks like a couple of them are going to be brighter, a little more transitional. Do not be fooled. Each of these shades carries a lot of saturation and pigment. And yeah, I had a lot of fun messing around with them and just creating a big, dark, smudgy mess. It is murky and muddy in the best, most aesthetic way. Plus it was really fun to play with a melt eyeshadow formula again. These eyeshadows definitely resemble a lot of the melt eyeshadows that I have worked with in the past. So it's not that this wasn't worth exploring. It absolutely is. However, the products that I picked up as an afterthought, I was not prepared for these little babies to blow me away. These pot lines are unlike any gel pot liners that I've ever used before. And maybe I just don't have that much experience with them, but I honestly think I was the most gagged by just how easy this was to use as not only liner, but as an eyeshadow base, which has essentially been, since I've applied it, budge proof. Very minimal creasing in those areas. And that is saying something, seeing as I am in my mid thirties and my eyelids just tend to crease now. So the fact that this is held up as well as it has truly outstanding. If you wanted to get anything from this collection and you were unsure of what to decide on, these should definitely go in your cart. If you don't already own a black gel liner, I honestly think this is the best one I've ever used. If anyone out there is a gel liner aficionado who has tried numerous different formulas across a number of different brands, and if you've used the Melt formula, please let me know your thoughts. But Nightshade is absolutely the most stunning deep indigo. And let me tell you, I was not emotionally prepared for what these two were going to do together. This is love. This is true love. If this is what glitter gel on the eyelids would look like all the time, I would use it more often. And the way that it all blends so beautifully into a really dark, deep, smoky eye, where you really don't know where one product ends and the other begins. And that is why this gel liner and this glitter eye gel are surprisingly my two favorite items in this whole collection. If there was anything that I could have done without in this order, it was probably boom slang. Is it pretty? Yeah. Is it earth shattering like Wisteria and Nightshade are? No. Also, these were really fun to play with. These kind of harken back to a time when makeup was more makeup-y, <laughs> which I know is kind of a realm that Bailey Sarian has always lived in. Yeah, sure, it's an ultra matte formula, which is what Melt is known for. And yeah, it's matte, but it's comfortable. It was really easy to blend the shades together to create a nice ombre. Also using it with a little liner brush worked beautifully to create a nice soft 
soft, diffused lip line. Everything from this collection really performed to the standard that I expect from Melt. And thematically, Bailey Sarian and Melt working together just makes sense. Top marks for me if that means anything. <laughs> I filled up an entire memory card and I really need to drink some water and maybe have a tiny skosh, just a skosh of whiskey. So I think I'm gonna call it there. And if you have any, I would love to know your thoughts on this collection. Did you buy this on launch? Were your expectations met or exceeded? Were you disappointed? Is this video going to sway you to purchase anything from the collection now that you've watched it? Any and all thoughts, I would love to hear them. All right, I think this scented candle is going to my Head, I'm gonna get out of this hot and bright enclosed space and I'm gonna love you and leave you But before I do, please let me rattle off the spiel to you Here are the many ways that you can help out my channel. You can give this video a big thumbs up You can comment down below what you thought of everything you can subscribe Any and all engagement with this video is crucial to its success in the algorithm So if you have a few spare moments, please engage with this video. You can follow me on Instagram. I will leave that right there and please stay safe wash your hands stay hydrated and I will see you in the next one. Bye Stick a fork in her fork. <laughs> Stick a fork in her forks. <laughs> Stick a fork in her forks. Excuse me. Yes? Hello? No, I can't help you with that right now. Solicitors. Am I right?